This is the conclusion to Fascism or Freedom. Fascism or Freedom, conclusion to Milden series on the roots of fascism with footnotes and a bibliography in italics. My honest opinion, the best part of this series was when I covered the individual thinkers. I have edited the remainder and am only posting this to give some sense of closure. It wasn't the greatest paper ever written, but I stand by it to this day. Work needs to be reconstituted so that it is no longer the result of alienation. As it is, work is a dullifying duty which is at odds with the joy of life. It places greater importance on the state and its conception of law and order than on gratifying work and self-regulating work democracy. Under the oppressive reality principle, work has become compulsive labor in which workers have no final interest in the products produced for fat cat owners. Now so, in short, Work is dehumanizing because it has no meaning. What is at stake is our definition of sexuality. Is it to be the outcome of alienated labor, or is it to be the consequence of self-realization? If work is conditional on the suppression of pleasure and eros, then sadistic and masochistic core characters will again germinate. Herbert Marcuse understood the repressive nature of the reality principle, he also thought there could be a non-repressive reality principle. In Eros and Civilization, in regards to this topic, he stated, These constraints, enforced by the need for sustaining a large quantum of energy and time for non-gratifying labor, perpetuate the desexualization of the body in order to make the organism into a subject-object of socially useful performances. Conversely, if the workday and energy are reduced to a minimum without a corresponding manipulation of the free time, the ground for these constraints would be undermined. Libido would be released and would overflow the institutionalized limits within which it is kept by the reality principle. Footnote. We are living in a cultural wasteland, one in which consumption and exploitation have been institutionalized and validated by authoritarians. We consume more than ever before without a concrete relatedness to how history truly unfolds. Since every act of consumption should be a positive, humane action, people need to stop in their tracks and question everything, because the act of consumption has become too much an end in itself. The time has come for a decision. If people are to start shaping the world in favor of Eros over Thanatos, they must first start right now to make decisions, whether on the environment, alienating education, fascist South Africa, or whatever. We are given two choices when the umbilical cord is snapped. We can either continue down the road to annihilation but we can march with exhilaration towards self-realization. As we become more cognizant of our own individuality, the burden of reality can be very strong. This is so especially because so much destructiveness is present. However, we must remain positive and keep pushing for an ideal future of how it ought to be. Most importantly, we need to understand the fundamental choice that confronts us all. As Eric Fromm wrote in Escape from Freedom, that man, the more he gains freedom of emerging from the original oneness with man and nature, and the more he becomes an individual, has no choice but to unite himself with the world in the spontaneity of love and productive work or else to seek a kind of security by such ties with the world as destroy his freedom and the integrity of his individual self. Footnote. 